That show, starring Joan Rivers. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Joan. A lot of you are probably wondering what I'm doing on a runway. <laughs> and <laughs> if it's not in an airport. And uh, it's because we're going to be discussing burlesque today. And with us, we have Sherry Britton, who can certainly show us how to strip. She was on the all-time greats and still is. And Vivian Vance, who wanted to learn as long as I wanted to learn, right? Did you ever, did you ever, did you ever do a strip tease for your husband? <laughs> you devil. That's a, uh, I am. I didn't either. That's because Edgar is very, very proper. You know, he's English. He wears pajamas with vests. He's, a, he's so proper. He even thinks it's indecent to take off weight. I mean, that's, you know, where we're at with Edgar. And, uh, I, I, when I first got out of college, this is really true, I used to work in strip joints because I wanted to be in show business. And not as a comedian, that was after they looked at me, but originally. <laughs> but you have to choose your theme song, and I used to strip to Little Things Mean a Lot. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, long because you want to be like you know part of the group I used to wear a g-string over my dress <laughs> and the only trouble was I didn't have a gimmick and in burlesque you know this every act has to have like a specialty or a gimmick for example there was a big tall girl like they named her Alice the Amazon she used to wear pizzas for pasties that was her gimmick. <laughs> yes yes there, uh, there was it was a sign then uh, there was ugly Irma she was the world's ugliest stripper she her gimmick was she wore seven veils over the puss. And then, then there was Helena. Her measurements were 66, 24, 31. You know what her gimmick was? She'd crawl on stage and try to stand up alone. And, uh, my gimmick was I would come on nude and the men would scream, put it on. But um, I guess uh, burlesque is pretty much dead now, you know, don't you think? And you know, that's because you've seen one stripper, you've seen them both. And you can't blame people, you know, they don't go that... Yes or no? Yes or no? I don't know whether it's not... For... No, that's no, I knew it was no. I just wanted to confuse the back. But uh, I, I, we were talking backstage with Sherry, and I was like, what are, what are old ex-burlesque queens do? You know, there are a lot of these queens around, right? They all became hairdressers. <laughs> I've been looking forward to doing this show for almost two months now, and I'm delighted when we said, let's do a show on learning how to strip for your husband. Who should we get? And Edgar said, let's get the best in the business, and we did Sherry Britton. Uh, <laughs> and so I wouldn't be alone. I said, let's get somebody on that will have a good time with me, and we looked for a comedian who is a good sport and a good actress, who is now on Broadway, coming in, and we got Vivian Vance. That's the, That's the microphone. Oh, good. <laughs> Did you ever work in burlesque? No, my mother wouldn't even let me go to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen it, and I love it. Yeah. I'd love to see it again. It's a great training ground. Wonderful training yeah. ground. I worked mm. with lots of comics who worked in uh, burlesque. One of the, great, the greatest comics in the world worked in, in burlesque. Oh. Now, when I was in New York, I used to go see Phil Silvers and Rags Ragland. I was their straight woman. Were you really? At the, yes, at the Gaiety Theater. On for, it's now the Victoria Theater at 46th and Broadway. And you worked with it? Because I, I started in burlesque. I wasn't kidding during the monologue. But I had a different name, Pepper January. Oh, I love that. Yeah, didn't you? Uh, comedy burlesque. spice. When, uh, well, like strip joints, which is a little different. Because oh, burlesque, you know. Quite different. Because there are a lot of burlesque. Ha the ha when do they start closing? Uh, you've got February, a yes. February 1942, uh, I sat at the El Tinge Theater on 42nd Street waiting for the midnight show. And I'm still waiting for the midnight show. And that was Never it. went on. That was it. And yet, what is your gimmick? We were talking my gimmick, about gimmicks. Uh, actually, is my hair. I've always had very long hair, and at one time it was down to my ankles. And it's the most provocative peekaboo material you can use is hair. Oh, it's wonderful. You and I are in trouble possible. already, Vivian. <laughs> peekaboo! <laughs> What's your gimmick, Vivian? Well, well, now let's see. Just 
coming around and listening to these. <laughs> really, one of, my, one of my gimmicks, one of the things that's always been so wonderful for me now, working with Sherry today, I've always stolen just a little bit from everybody I worked with who was good. I always stood in the wings and watched the big ones go, even when I, when I was an understudy, when I was in the chorus. I was always in the wings watching the big stars go and practicing what they were doing. Now I don't know how far I'm going to get with this. <laughs> well, be but... my guest. Be my guest. <laughs> when you talk about the big stars go, oh, I knew it was going to start to happen. Hurry up and don't move because we're right back after the commercial. <laughs> they put my hair on too soon because I'm not supposed to wear my gimmick till later. <laughs> This was originally somebody's wig, but I don't know whose, Lassie's. But we were talking before. <laughs> Vivian said that you used to watch the big stars and copy. Do different, the stars in burlesque, do they have individual trademarks? Like, does a big girl walk a certain way? Does a small girl walk? Oh, yes. Uh, Vivian, have you ever, did you ever do your own nightclub act? No, I, I worked in nightclubs, but I just sang in nightclubs. Because I've never been a... Uh, stand up and do my own type uh, show. Yeah, because somebody write, has to write for me and then I get up and do it. Because I know, right. like, when I write my own comic material and someone steals a joke, you go insane. Oh, now, yeah. if someone stole, like, your gimmick with the hair, would you have been upset? Uh, well, there was such great rivalry amongst all the uh, women in burlesque because how just how much can you create? How very different can you be? And at that time, there were 17 burlesque theaters in New York alone. So you can imagine all the strip teasers that were employed or whatever you'd call it, all <laughs> over the rest of the country. Now, there'd be such mad... with the actual physical fights because they'd stand and watch one another in the wings and say, you stole that move, you stole that gimmick, you stole my way of... For example, now, I invented panels, uh, G-strings or little triangles that you wear as a... It's a tiny bikini. And uh, I have knock knees. So I invented a uh, fringe or chiffon that went from there to the floor, from the G-string to the floor, and then I knew that my legs looked fine. Well, in two minutes flat, everybody was wearing panels. I had to start a panel up here. You know, a, <laughs> what is this, Vivian? Do you know what that is? Pass it to Vivian. <laughs> well, I could guess, you know, but, uh, but I really know what it is. So I'm, I'm not going to say, but I could guess an awful lot of things. But it's pretty. May I tell you about it? Yes, yes, this is a pasty. I'm fascinated this by is that. a pasty. Looks kind of like a little dunce cap, doesn't it? Only it doesn't go on your head. <laughs> it goes somewhere else. Now, for a young lady who is not particularly well endowed, it makes much ado about nothing. You see. Now, this happens to be a very fancy one, and they don't make them this nicely anymore. They're usually sequins, and I can't wear them because my hair gets caught in sequins, and you can have an accident that way. I had people wish. Oh, what an accident. <laughs> <laughs> don't let us get our hair caught would, in our pasties. Would you start... Would you... Would you... <laughs> I had that trouble all the time. <laughs> would you show us... Sherry, would you do a strip for us and then Vivian try one? Would you? All right. Oh, but the passionate and provocative, oh. the daring and dynamic, oh. the one and only Miss Sherry Britton. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Next comes some of the important stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear you call. Take it. Well, but not, oh, I'm not a man in the audience, though. <laughs> take it off, take it off, take it off. Oh, that, that's playing like peekaboo, right? Oh, yes, you must have peekaboo. It's a lot of boo there. <laughs> <laughs> With our parade of tempestuous beauties, we present the adorable and exciting star of two continents, the girl with the million dollar body, the fiery and fantastic Miss Vivian Van.
Diane Curry Park, you just took your glove off. The Broadway shows are worse than that. Does but that I do anything to you, dear? <laughs> takes great pleasure in presenting the voluptuous and exciting star of the show. Here she is, the coil with that captivating body, Miss Pepper January. River's autograph on these. <laughs> then you, you've got to keep it exciting. I know. I know. Are you married, Vivian? <gasps> I'm very happily married to a book publisher, and I can't imagine what we say, Vivian. What'd you learn today? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a surprise? Yes. But you should keep. You should be provocative in your marriage. I think. Well, You've got to work at it. Well, yeah, I don't have really. to. I don't know. I don't have. I don't have to twirl my gloves. <laughs> Very happy marriage, just the way it is. Maybe you've got other tricks. I think if I twirled my gloves, I might not get to do these daytime shows. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny with Eddie. Like every once in a while, I go out and buy a very sexy nightgown. And I got really like a winner at Saks, and he said to me, I come out of the bathroom, <laughs> and he said, you look 11 years old. You know how that hurts you? Oh, that's bad. Yes. Because I have my undershirt underneath. <laughs> you know, I, Sherry, when, when I first went at show business, I was dressing with the chorus girls. Uh, they also not only wear pasties, but the little things that they wear underneath, you know, what do you call them? G-strings? No, the uh, things to make you look a little larger. That I never had to buy one, so I don't know. Oh, you mean false? You mean false? I, 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 I dressed next to a girl who was doing needlework, and we were down under the heat pipes when I was a chorus girl. She was doing needlework. And I kept watching her absolutely wide-eyed because as she did a stitch, she put the... Uh, oh, 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 great. And oh. then I discovered she used them as pin cushion cushions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very sweet. And then that hurt. <laughs> What do you think about topless now? Do you think topless is any art to topless? How can there be? Whipped cream before the meat and potatoes is yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> and it's just there. You know, uh, it, it's like seeing the end of a baseball game uh, or the end of a football game. You go there to see the game played. Yes, yes. You don't go there for the end or the score. You might as well pick up a newspaper and get the score the next day. You know, once there, there was a I was out in Hollywood doing a show with Lucy about three weeks ago, and I always love to look at all the new ads on Sunset Boulevard. What are they doing this year on Sunset Boulevard? Because it's always wonderful. My favorite one is up now, and it makes you think a little. It is Topless Hypnotist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you stare at? They don't yes, use the watch anymore, I'm yes. sure. <laughs> but that's what it is. Topless Hypnotist. Oh, right back after this break, so don't move. Topless I want to say goodbye to Sherry Britton. Thank you so Thank much. You, a pleasure Jill. to have you on. Thanks. And Vivian Vance, goodbye, delighted darling. to meet you. And you're just great. You got a whole new And if you'd like to see the show when you're in New York, write Joan Rivers tickets. Box 850, Radio City Station, New York, one to below one nine. Miss Rivers' guests stay at the Hotel Commodore while in New York. <laughs>